I understand Army of the Emotional Development that didn't doesn't really he went, no, was, he, no, that was no that, that was the work. first name. Yeah, that, we that have was, for quite a while. <laughs> They changed uh, that because it didn't have the didn't have the zip didn't, factor. It didn't, the marketing yeah, it didn't, people were like, mm, the "Marketing, yeah." What about <laughs> could it? What about Army of the Dead as opposed to the emotional development? I recognized. Oh my God! My first big scene is with Dave Batista and Zach on my first day. Are they kidding me? And I just said to myself, "Oh my God! They're gonna realize I'm not a bad. Ass. They're gonna realize I'm not a bad." Ass. And then at some point, I realized, but a bad ass doesn't need to be perfect. Hi there, my name is Clark Coes. I'm a senior writer at Entertainment Weekly magazine. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table uh, with the Army of the Dead, the heist horror movie, uh, which is being released in select theaters on May 14th with a streaming release on Netflix on May 21st. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a hell of a panel. I'm very excited to introduce them. First of all, we have the Army of the Dead's Director, co-writer, cinematographer, Zack Snyder. Dave Batista, uh, very nice to have you, Dave. Amari Hardwick, Anna De La Riguera, mm -hmm. Matthias uh, Schweigerhofer, and we have uh, Nora Anazadeh. We're here to talk about the heist horror movie, uh, Army of the Dead. Zach, maybe you could sort of set up the, the, the movie a little bit for people watching. Sure. It's a movie that takes place in a, um, after there's been a zombie apocalypse. And what happened is the zombies made it to Las Vegas, uh, where they were met with a uh, response from the government and everyone involved to sort of stop the spread of this zombie virus. And they were able to build a, a wall of containers around Las Vegas and trapped the zombies inside to quarantine them. Once the wall was finished, everyone sort of evacuated. Uh, Las Vegas was left uh, abandoned. And then years later, with the zombies still inside, this team of zombie hunters is recruited by this millionaire casino owner to go back and get the money that he left inside of his casino. Mm. And so they have to kind of do this Ocean's Eleven style of bank heist in this zombie infested Vegas. You ready to play? There's $200 million in the vault beneath the strip. With a 32 hour window to get it out. Find the safe. This should be a simple in and out. It's not too late to go back. And Dave, how did you get involved in the in the film? And, and also tell us a little bit about, about your character. Um, <laughs> initially, I heard about the project uh, at, at a party <laughs> uh, from, from Zach's agent. He told me about it and he said, you know, Zach's working on this. So it's kind of a, a zombie heist project. And I said, that's really interesting. I, um, but, you know, not for me. <laughs> because there was this other project that I really wanted to get done with Zach. We had been talking about it for years. And it was very much uh, kind of an actor's piece for me, which I've been pursuing, like acting roles, acting roles, to, just to prove my worth as an actor. And so uh, eventually, a few months down the road, it came back to my attention. And they asked me if I'd read the script. And I said, you know, sure, because I, you know, I did. I wanted to work with Zach. <laughs> and I read it, and it wasn't what I initially thought it was going to be. And then after having the conversation with Zach about the character about Scott Ward, I definitely, I said, sign me up, dude, I'm in. And so Scott is, uh, he's not your predictable, generic uh, action hero. He's a guy who really doesn't want to be where he's at. He's a guy with a lot of heart, a lot of depth to his character, a lot of depth to his relationship with his daughter. And it's very much, you know, he's very much a tortured soul. Uh, he's looking for redemption. He turned his back on his daughter and all he really wants in life is to reconnect with her. So that was really for, for, for me, that was kind of the heart of the character. And that's why really, that's what drew me to the script and to the story and why I wanted so much to be a part of that and to work with, uh, work with Zach, which I've been trying to do for years. F***ing guy just wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't give me a job. <laughs> Sorry, is, that, is that true, Zach? You, you just wouldn't give him a job? I, uh, yeah. No, not true. <laughs> not true, but it's fine. It's fine. I got her. That was so kind. <laughs> uh, and Dave, you're quite a, a a zombie movie fan, correct? I well, I am. I'm a fan of the genre. I'm a, an enormous fan of The Walking Dead, which is, you know, again, is why, like, initially, I just, it just, I wasn't what I was looking for when I first heard about the project. But uh, when I read it, it was just something different than what I thought it was going to be. It had a lot of layers. And to me, even looking back at it, and it's 
Like if you have asked me to describe or when I hear the film described as a, a zombie heist film, I feel like, man, it's really it's really it's hard to describe what this film is because there's just there's so much going on. There's so many different layers of what's going on in this film. And to me, as a fan looking at it, watching it, I mean, the zombies are not I, to me. They're obviously a big part of the story, but I, I don't think they're the most intriguing part of the story. Yeah. They're not an afterthought by any mean, means, but they're also to me watching it. They're not like the focal point. I think what's going on around them and they are definitely the threat, but there's so much else going on in this script, in this story, in this film, that I feel like it's just unfair to label it as a zombie film. I understand Army of the Emotional Development that didn't, doesn't really it was, test. No, it was, it, that <laughs> no, was, yeah, no, that was the work. first name yeah, that, we that had <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> They changed uh, that because it didn't have the didn't have the zip factor. It didn't, marketing yeah, it didn't, people were like, mm, marketing. Yeah. What about <laughs> could it? What about Army of the Dead as opposed to the emotional development? Is right. that, <laughs> is that a thing you that's, would consider? That's, that's why yours. Yeah, that's why. That's why the the they've got they get they get paid the big. No, and I, I was like, you know, touche. <laughs> you got me. It's better. He said, "Son, I've made a life." Out of reading people's faces. Think about it. everything we did, all those people we saved. The way they held their eyes. Look what it does. So if you don't mind my saying, but what if I can see you out of faces? What if just once we did something just okay. right? But Nora, how did you get involved in the film and, and tell us a little bit about your character? Yeah, so I auditioned for it two years ago. I did a tape with my iPhone. A lot of fun then didn't hear about it for like a month and my agent called me and was like yeah you got the part and i was so happy then i we shot in albuquerque it was amazing and so i play lily she's a, a coyote who works in the um, in the refugee camps and she helps the mercenaries get back into the zombie stronghold you don't really know what you're gonna get with her she she's strong she she's a bit of a tough cookie but she has a lot of heart and uh, i actually discovered a lot each time I take on a role, I always feel that any character is an extension of you and you can actually really elevate yourself as a human being. Like a role can actually really make you grow as a human being. And Lily really made me grow to, she, it was extraordinary. Uh, I remember this scene where I had a lot of doings, a lot of dialogue, and I completely mm. forgot all my dialogue and I didn't know what I was doing. And I just said to myself, oh my God, they're going to realize I'm not a bad ass. They're going to realize I'm not a bad ass. And then at some point I realized, but a badass doesn't need to be perfect, doesn't need to be, she can be sensitive, she can have she can have doubts. And this is when I understood who Lily was, and this is how I actually learned learned a lot on a human level. Anna, tell us about your character. Oh, my character, her name is Maria Cruz. I I liked it because when when I got when I read the script for the first time, it was only it only said Cruz. And I thought it was a guy all the time. And I was like, well, who am I playing? I couldn't like, you know, I wasn't sure that was my role, which I loved because, you know, Zach wrote very strong female roles in, in this movie. So that was very refreshing. And it wasn't the stereotype that I kind of like used to play. But uh, yeah, she she's a veteran from the military. She used to team with with Omari's character and Dave's character where like the veterans here were uh, very experienced on killing zombies you know before and uh, we get invited to go to through this um, heist and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an car expert which I'm not in real life I'm the worst driver ever Dave and Zach realized that when we were shooting <laughs> yeah that that's and, and you know she has her backstory with Dave uh, that you guys will see later in the film and you, the film has this absolutely fantastic title sequence, which depicts the, you know, the, the fall of Las Vegas. And, it, and it's a sequence yes. that, you know, Dave is involved, as you said, Amari is involved and you're involved. Um, yeah. What was it like? I mean, it actually reminded me very much of how much I loved the, the Watchmen <laughs> opening sequence, which, you know, you could watch over and over again. Um, what was it like sort of shooting that part of the film? You know, for me, it's like, Zach, when I watched the movie, I was like, what the f***? This is the most amazing title sequence I've ever seen. Not, not that you're here, but to be honest, it, it's incredible. It's super exciting. I couldn't understand what he was doing. Like, oh, you have to do this. And we're going to put you like in a green screen and we're going to present, you know, the characters like that. It wasn't in the script like that, but he had the idea in his mind, probably. <laughs> I think you did. Uh, I know you did. 
Yeah, I, I I loved I love I love how the movie starts, and um, I, I was as excited as I, I guess the audience will be. How oh, I wish that there were more than the twenty four hours in the day. Even if there were forty more, I wouldn't sleep a minute away. Uh -oh. oh, there's blackjack and poker and the roulette wheel, a fortune won. Viva Las Vegas. And Omari, tell us about your character and maybe uh, the particular weapon that, that he likes to use. You know, for, for a lot of us, and I think, you know, Dave speaks uh, correctly when he states, obviously, to Anna's point, we were this team of sorts, um, Scott, myself, and Cruz. And I think Dave is correct in, in stating that we were all on a voyage to try to figure out who we are as much as, of course, our dear director in stating that we're on this heist of sorts, um, a la Ocean's Eleven. If you were to see Ocean's Eleven be separated in this faction of all these different characters having to look into a mirror and carry that mirror around, and by the end of the movie, not only come up with the prize, uh, you know, catch or the big fish of them all, that they're all chasing their Moby Dick of sorts, they equally have to chase that which they are and that who they are. And and that's what we were going through. I think Dave says it best when he when he says, you know, the backdrop of this film is the zombies. That makes it very different from any other uh, project. If you think about my character, Vandero, he's sort of in the middle of that. He's the moral compass, so to speak, of not just the movie, but of what everybody as characters feels within their own character. So you get, you know, Lily the Cowdy, who's trying to figure life out and is she doing wrong or doing right? You get, obviously, Scott, did he do wrong? Did he kick his daughter to the curb? You get Cruz and, and what Anna was trying to play was, hey, this is a reunion of sorts, we can make some money. But equally, I can reunion with Scott, um, played, you know, by Dave. And then, of course, uh, Dieter is just trying to figure out his ass from his freaking head. <laughs> and then Scott, you know, asked me to be responsible for for that mm -hmm. figuring out for Dieter. And then these guys become a thing. They're they're the odd duo out. But this guy, man, he really Vander is the the epicenter of the moral conviction that we're all trying to figure out, not in a pretentious way, but just in some sort of way that we can put our gun uh, or the butt of our gun in and just go, hey, this is who I am. I'm fighting for something. I don't know what it is, but you know, we've heard from different people in life You'll fall for anything if you don't fight for something. So I think Vandero is really that mantra. Like, okay, I got to fight for something. And to the point where when Zach got with me, he figuratively whispered in my ear and said, hey, even in the way this disembowels with that iconic, you know, chainsaw, he's going to do it with the desire to be intimately close to the zombie he kills. So I think Vandero is really even in, in, you know, bringing mayhem and destruction to Anna's point. That's what Scott and, and, and my character and, and Anna's character were trained to do. Vandero wants to do that, but pay homage to the zombies that he's killing at the same token, which is very interesting. That's what interested me about playing this character, for sure. And uh, <laughs> Matthias, could you uh, tell us a little, I mean, your character has a very specific role in the in, in the sort of group that, that, that uh, sneaks back into Las Vegas. Maybe you could uh, tell us what that is and, and tell us a little bit about your character. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing Ludwig Dieter, the most, you know, common German name ever. I, I know a lot of Ludwigs and Dieters, <laughs> and uh, I'm playing, I'm, I'm playing, yeah, the safe cracker. Uh, he's a, he's, you know, he's a very handsome and very funny and adorable guy who really... <laughs> What? Handsome? <laughs> Very it was, handsome. Uh, it was so cool because uh, when I first read the script and I thought, okay, this is like super cool, you know, it's a German and it's not, <laughs> and it's not an historical piece and I'm allowed to be funny. That was like, yeah, I called my mom and I said, my mom, that's my way to Hollywood. You know, that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood is calling. I, I, I love Dieter. A very nerdy, very special guy, but he's really good with safes. That, but not with human beings, especially with Vanderhoek. Yeah, hey, and also with with sausage hands, with Dave's hands. <laughs> I received uh, the shooting uh, uh, the shooting schedule, and I recognized, oh my god, my first big scene is with Dave Batista and Zach on my first day. Are they kidding me? So <laughs> I was I was so nervous, and I was really like shaking. And the first thing I did was like, okay, um, Dave put his. Wonderful, and by the way, you have a beautiful hand. Beautiful hand. <laughs> uh, but, but, but they're huge, you know, they're huge. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he, he was putting his hand on, on my blueprint, on the blueprint of the safe. And the first thing that came into my mind was, uh, 
put your hands away, Mr. Sausage Finger. And they started to laugh. And Zach was, just, Zach was just like, you know, like, what the f was that? Did he say Sausage Fingers? <laughs> and, and he was like, uh, okay, he said Sausage Fingers. That's funny. And then cut. And uh, yeah, that, that was the start for me on the film. But it was really funny. So we're almost out of time. Um, Zach, maybe one last question for you. Could you name uh, your favorite horror movie and your favorite heist movie? My favorite horror movie, uh, The Thing, is probably one of my favorite horror movies. And my favorite heist movie, I like a few different heist movies. Let's go with Heat. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in with a horror movie or a heist movie? Exorcist uh, and Inside Man. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I used to oh. see Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger was my favorite. <laughs> While I was growing up, I saw all of them. <laughs> and uh, I think the first Ocean's Eleven, I fell in love with Andy Garcia. Yeah. Bro, I don't know the yeah, shot. Maybe the Shining. Maybe the Shining. Twenty Eight Days Later. I don't know. Jack Nicholson. Some about him in that role, kind of. But I'd have to go with the uh, with uh, Zach's on on Heat. I mean, you know, you get those guys, Pacino and De Niro, really showing up in one scene with each other. But it felt like they were in thirty scenes with each other. That that says something about filmmaking. Well, folks, thank you so much for taking part in Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. Um, Army of the Dead is set to be released in select theaters on May 14th, 2021, uh, with a streaming release by Netflix on May 21st. Thanks. Thanks to all of you, genuinely. You, this Clark. has been an absolute blast. And it just leaves me to, to thank you and to thank everybody watching. And uh, see you for Army of the Dead too, or see some of you maybe for Army of the Dead too. Yeah. Right, bye bye. You never know. You'll <laughs> see them you all as zombies at the very least. Yeah.